Now, I'm going to introduce you to the next guest, but just before I do, a little bit of uh, history on him. Uh, a former Islamic extremist who is now studying at the University of Cambridge. Uh, he's an outspoken critic of Islamist extremism and will try and explain actually why we are on in the situation we are at the moment. Uh, Suhail Ahmed, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me on. Um, can I be absolutely rude at the beginning? You just don't look like a terrorist. You look kind of nice and cuddly. That's quite... That's... A lot of people have told me that. And in fact, when I was an extremist, I was very outgoing. I was very friendly. Mm. Um, a lot of people have the misconception that if someone's friendly, that they're not going to be an extremist. Mm. But those two things can exist at the same time. But you were born and bred in this country. Indeed. Yeah. And so as far as you're, con you're British. Yes, I'm yeah. British. What made you become an extremist? Because I didn't consider myself to be British at the time. Why? I was raised from the age of around six. Mm. And I was told that Britain was the enemy, that I was living in enemy territory, that I wasn't British, that I am not loyal to Britain, that I am Muslim first and Muslim only, and that one day we will all rise up and fight jihad against the non-Muslims. Why would... What sort of people told you this? Why would anybody tell you this? My very own parents. Was it their fault or had they been brainwashed? They had themselves been brainwashed. And I, I, I do think I know why. It was to do with a multitude of, mm. of reasons. It was during the first wave of Salafization. So I was of the form of Wahhabism or s Salafism. Was that Iran that you're talking about? That's what? in Saudi Arabia. Right. Do you think that there are many people who hold the thoughts that you used to still living in this country? Yes, that is the very reason I chose to speak out against it. Because when I came out of the other end, I realised, oh my God, I almost... I was considering doing something horrific. And I wasn't the only one thinking along those lines. What sort of thing were you considering doing? It's always difficult to say, and I've, I've, I've said it many times, but it's always difficult. I was at one stage, unfortunately, considering en engaging in an act of violence in mm. London. Mm. And what, what gave you the epiphany to stop all this? My own moral compass. But how did you get out of the, the brainwashing effect that a lot of people have been put through um, that has made them decide they believe in this amazing God uh, mm. and that even committing appalling, appalling acts mm. is going to be good for this, uh, th th this God that they follow? How can anybody get into that situation? I've spoken to many imams and they say oh, it's completely wrong, it's not what Islam is all about. Mm. The fact is, is that there are many forms of Islam. Mm and that the majoritarian form of Islam that is followed is generally kind of from the 16th century. Um, it's traditionalist Islam. Now, with respect to myself, I honestly, it's almost a miracle that I came out the other end. And my, my former friends actually told me when I did c come out openly as uh, former an apostate, yeah. essentially. Um, a cultural Muslim, but an apostate. Mm. They said, how did you lose faith? How did you mm. turn out like this? You used to deal with our doubts. And how did you? I would, I would give them arguments. Mm. Are you still religious, though? I am partially religious, I would say. I don't believe. Um, I do believe that maybe a God exists, but I don't believe in the mm. God of the Abrahamic religions. Do you feel that now, because of what you've said and the fact you've come out like this, do you feel you are now um, in a very dangerous position? Because I imagine after people seeing you on television and telling your story, um, they, those people who still feel the same way that you did, are mm. going to be very, very angry. And indeed they are. When I decided to come out openly and to speak about this publicly, mm. I knew that my safety would be in danger yet i decided to still talk about it because that's how much i love my country yeah i hated my country i wanted to see its downfall originally but when i came out the other end i i kind of took on the british identity and became quite patriotic
But how did that? Is it just from thought? You just thought a long time, and you had is that. How you change? I mean, how did it actually change from such an opposite, black to white? I mean, you know. What? Not entirely. It was um, a long process, but it was also understanding biological evolution for the first time. Yeah. Uh, I realized that that contradicted my form of Islam, and I then started looking for other forms of Islam that accepted evolution. Why does religion do this? We're going to talk to uh, a, a Christian. Um, who is going to go on about how Christianity is dying in the UK. I would like to see, this is a terrible thing to say, but I would like to see all religion die off all over the world and maybe we could start again in a situation that doesn't try to uh, promote things that happened thousands of years ago. If you were to go back 800, 900 years in the Christian religion, mm. they were doing exactly the same. Yes. Um... I, I would kind of contend against that uh, somewhat. Originally, that was my position. I was very angry. I hated religion. I hated especially Islam. But I came to realize that there is a utility in religion, that it does serve a function and a purpose. It binds people together. Hence why I consider myself to be a cultural Muslim. Mm. I would much rather people not believe, but mm. still ascribe themselves to their tradition. Yeah, I can agree with that. My brother is uh, a Christian born again um, and we get on really well now but some people I have met you know from the Christian community are completely un mm. I mean I just I don't know it, 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 it beggars belief and all these religions that we have we, we're a very open country we will accept anybody having a religion but some people are now wanting to put their religion in in front of everything else including people's safety and uh, and comfort and i think that's totally wrong what you're referring to is islamist supremacism that's a very deep um trend within islamist islam extremist islamist islam they consider themselves to be so much more better than everyone else mm. that mm. literally creating an empire and then taking over the entire world is justified to them how do you feel there was a demonstration here in london today Apparently 200,000 Palestinian supporters, uh, probably most of them have never been to Palestine or Israel or any of that part, but they're going around still shouting out slogans like kill the Jews and everything else. How did so many of these people, probably a lot of them non-Muslim as well, get trapped like this? That's a very interesting question and anti-Semitism is a very old evil. Um, the way in which it's happened, I think, is that we have stopped talking to each other. We don't have dialogue. Mm. We just shout past each other. Mm. Now, the free Palestine people will, will say that the Zionists are just inhuman. They'll literally dehumanize the other side. And what happens when you dehumanize someone? You're capable of doing the worst things possible. Mm. And well, we saw that on October the 7th because they indeed, were brainwashed from the age of indeed. three. And I used to hate Israel, but now I, I do, in fact, support Israel. I do have qualms sometimes with mm. some policies and, and the way they act sometimes. But uh, and by so and large, do a lot of I'm Israelis, supportive. of course. Indeed. Yeah, and I think we forget that. that but at the moment, I, I also think our media, in a way, is biased because we don't really show much of what's happening in Israel, the bombs landing there and people's homes being destroyed. We don't show much of that at all. We kind of tend to go on the other side. But isn't this all caused, because I'm, I'm not religious, but isn't this all caused by, you know, I've seen extremist Christians, you know, not standing outside of interview people, standing outside abortion clinics, mm. threatening all sorts of appalling things of the people inside. How can this be love in any form? It isn't. Um, that's the straight answer. But where that comes from is absolute, absolutist belief that's how people are willing to commit suicide attacks in the name of their religion because they believe so much that they're willing to do anything do you think organizations like hamas and others um are capable of actually knowing what they're doing in brainwashing people i think they truly believe in what they preach um as horrific as it is um the human condition is very strange and 
religion often kind of overrides one's sensibilities, rational faculties. In psychology, we refer, we refer to that as um, a core belief. And if any contradictory evidence comes along and you, you purposefully or rather subconsciously don't even notice it. How do we, because there are not only people living in this country, born in this country like you, but there are an enormous amount of people who've come into this country illegally, as we know, um, who may well be wanting eventually to do harm because they believe they're spreading their message and everything else. How do we get people in the position you were with your extremist thoughts when you were younger? How do we turn them around? Because there'll probably be people watching and listening now, banging their fists on the table and saying, I'm having that, that's appalling. To be quite honest, um, genuine 180 degrees turn mm. from being an extremist such as I was is extremely rare. I've, I've only met one other person like myself. I There's a never... son of Hamas guy, yes. you know, he's sort of like that. And could you go and lecture, you know, talk to people who are, who are like you, what you were before and change their minds? Have you looked into doing that? Oh, absolutely. I go up and down the country, speak at universities. Would mosques ask awareness. you to go in or not? Not with mosques. Do you have security there? Because it must be dangerous in the universities. Well, I'd rather not comment on that, right. but yeah. there are security measures yeah, put yeah, in yeah, place. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm concerned about, you know, you coming out. I'm very glad that you've come out like this. But I am concerned because there'll be people listening now, watching now, um, who are not understanding what you're saying. A lot of them, as I said before, on these marches, and 250,000, I suppose, I don't know if anybody really counted them, is quite a lot of people. They're all very young, quite often university Yes. Type. How did they get in this situation? That's, it's because of, essentially, our educational institutions have become brainwashing factories whereby views such as the West is evil and all the people that are against the West are good, including mm. Iran, mm. President Xi's regime in China. Mm. They accept the most horrid regimes and the most horrid people simply on the pretense of anti-imperialism. And anti-Semitism. I mean, when I was at Manchester Uni in the 90s, there was the socialist workers, and they were obviously, they were, you know, anti-Semitic. But this has enabled them, they've now become the Islamic left, and this has enabled them to come out the cracks. Um, it's called the Green-Red Alliance, the alliance yeah. between yeah. the extreme... And I, call, I refer to them as the far left, because yeah. that's what they are. And the origins of this ideology kind of came from... Um, it, it preceded the Cold War, but it, it, it grew in the Cold War, whereby people literally supported the Soviet Union and the satellite states yeah. and didn't say anything about the human rights abuses occurring there. Yeah. And it just became a thing of self-hating, self-flagellating. -flagell Do you blame some politicians? Absolutely. What, from a weakness of not doing it? Is well, it Jeremy really? Corbyn came out, he's oh, just yeah. come out, of course, um, in support of South Africa and their rather ridiculous... Mm. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the government well, of South blood Africa. Libel. Yeah. Blood libel. Jeremy Corbyn is a literal walking and talking national security threat. Yeah. The very fact that he was in such a position that he may have become Prime Minister... It's terrifying. That's terrifying. Imagine what he would have been doing now as Prime Minister with Israel and Hamas and the Red Sea. What would he have been doing? Indeed. Oh. And I, I know I know that that sort of type because I've engaged with them. Yeah, and they seem harmless, like you say, they seem all friendly and that. But underneath, indeed, is evil. Indeed, mm. okay. I'm I'm as I said, I'm I'm concerned for your welfare, and I hope I think you're a very very brave man. But I I think we're on the verge, or even in the beginnings of the Third World War, the, the way things are going at the moment. And the fact that we're having to uh, get together with other European nations in America to protect shipping in the, Red, in the Red Sea. I mean, this is an escalation that is really far, far too worrying. One thing that is often missed in the public discourse is that Iran is the primary driver mm. for this instability, mm. for whatever Hamas is doing, what Hezbollah is doing, what the Houthi rebels are doing. It's... Iran using them as proxies to yeah. engage in indirect war. Yeah. And that should be more salient in the, in the public I mean, it is discourse. being publicised, but the, 
I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, Biden and that, obviously, they're given the $6 billion or that, although that's being held. But one thing I want to ask is, you're of Pakistani origin, and I, yes. I went to school in the 80s in Birmingham, and I had loads of Muslim friends, and there was none of this. It sort of began in the, in the... In the in the Well, there was no yeah. hassle against Jews. It was mainly, you know, from Catholics. So, but it was in the 90s that, that it yes. sort of developed. It, it was, was like the Intifada, and it was That's sort of... when my parents became radicalised. Yeah. They became radicalised, ironically because the West did not intervene soon enough in the Bosnian genocide. Right. Because they didn't seem to get involved in the Bosnian genocide. Because, you know, when there's Muslims, they normally get more involved. But they didn't see... And, and the West did save Muslims, didn't they? In, Absolutely. In so what, was, what were Absolutely. your parents going on about? Which, which kind of contradicts what, what's happening now. They're now saying, actually, we hate the West because they are intervening in Muslim countries. Mm. Mm. It, Do you still have a relationship with your parents? Absolutely not. And honestly, even if I could get back in touch with them, I would choose not to. Because what Seriously? they believe in, what they believe in, is so horrific mm. and stands against my very values and principles what that I, I don't want to see them. What are the sort of things that they believe in that make you feel so strong? They believe in global jihad of the violent type. They believe that um, they are su supreme that they are better than everyone else. They're frankly racist against white people too. Do they approve of things like the 7-7 bombing and the Manchester Arena bombings then? Whilst they didn't approve of it directly, I do remember quite conspicuously when 9-11 happened yeah. and the household, my parents were happy. Well, why wouldn't you approve of it? If you were an Islamic extremist, mm. you would approve of, of if it. And your parents still live in Britain? They do. Yeah. And do you, I mean, it must be hard for you because you must still love them a bit, but you don't want to. I mean, it's. What's my it? loyalty to my country and to my values and principles comes before my loyalty to anything else, including myself, which is why I'm willing to put myself in, in harm's way. Why do they live here and have lived here for a long, long time if they hate the country so much? Precisely because they know that life is easier in Britain, that Britain is a good place to live in. They. In fact, there's a concept in Islam known as hijra. It's about making your way back to the Islamic lands, similar to uh, the, the same principle in, in Judaism. Mm. Um, and they don't follow that part. They stay here, they hate the West, they hate Britain, they cause trouble, they're literal walking national security threats, and they don't, they don't actually put their money where their mouth is. Do you think our country is too soft, that our police force and our governments are so worried about being called racist, so worried about being criticised, that we have allowed this to sneak in under the radar and not do anything about it when, you know, it was the far right who kicked up lots of fuss and mm. they did it in such an appalling and terrible way? It's not way. even under the radar, though, is it? This is an existential threat, and I'm not over-exaggerating. No, you're not. No. Um, what's... The problem is, is that there are so many people like that that believe in that, that how do you even respond? And the authorities dare not touch it. Well, we saw the civil service. Of... Did you just read that story about the civil service? I did indeed. Unbelievable. They're actually promoting it and yeah. civil servants going, oh, my brother was a, was a, a radicalizer. Oh, I know that jihadist. And these were people, our civil servants. But you said that, that Muslims, it was the, they wanted to go back to the country like this. But isn't it now changed that Islam, they want to basically indoctrinate other Western countries and then become Islamic? Yes, Islam is very proselytizing, mm -hmm. yeah. the most proselytizing. So that's why they want to come is. here to change so, it. So, Hale, hey, we're running out of time, but uh, messages coming in thick and fast from our viewers and our listeners. A um, lot of them saying, you're very brave. Yeah, you're uh, brave. It's hard work setting yourself free well done um this says well, what a well-balanced intelligent young man salah salah is respect maureen and another one says that you are incredibly brave i think there is a lot of fear amongst muslims they're frightened to speak out against islam in any way says lisa in birmingham that is absolutely the truth um i when I became, initially when I de-radicalized, I was more of a progressive Muslim. Mm. And behind closed doors, they'd speak honestly about the, the state of Muslims and the Muslim world. Yet in public, they wouldn't say a word. Mm. 
Mm. Because what about mosques? Because we saw sort of talk TV didn't it expose a lot of mosques. They found people speaking, saying terrible things. What percentage of sort of mosques are spreading this Islamic hatred? I'm not entirely sure what the percentage is, but I would consider it to be of a number that is significant enough mm. to be mm. highly concerning. Mm. Now, there was a guy who preached at my mosque called Anwar Al Aulaki. Yeah. He was an Al Qaeda operative and scholar. In fact, he was the first U.S. citizen to be killed by drone strike. He had come from America and was visiting, and I was influenced by him. Mm. Well, we used to have, we had Abu Hamza on the show, we had Omar Bakri Mohammed and Jem Chow, we had them all on the show. And they all had young guys with them with their faces covered who were obviously, some of them might have actually committed some of the offences. We are bending up backwards yeah. when it comes to pure evil. Mm. Liberalism cannot survive if you allow entities or ideologies that are completely hostile to ours mm. and they see that as weakness don't they we look at in we're going to take a, hang on yeah. we're going to take a short break uh we're back with sahil ahmed who is uh, a former islamist extremist and he has a lot a lot of uh, your microphone again do you know what's it what <clears throat> Why I have to work with such sorry, amateurs, I've no idea. Um, Sahil, sorry about this. Sorry, Not at um, all. He has changed completely. Former Islamic, uh, if you just joined us, fascinating interviewer, and you're a very brave man. Thank but you. Do you think a, a lot of this, I've been just talking in the break, do you think a lot of this religion and extremism, because people are so frightened of their own demise, that they want to feel they are doing the best to make sure they have a, a great afterlife. Is that is that the reason for a lot of this or not? It absolutely is. It's fear of death and the belief in afterlife kind of circumvents that so that one doesn't yeah. live their life traumatised. Do they genuinely believe they're going to go to heaven? And they absolutely do. And, and I have 21 virgins, with, is it? You believe with that? With 100% certainty, did, did I that. used to believe that. But I, what did your mind say? Because people go, oh, that can't be true. But it's it? all religions have this idea that they're going to go some well, yeah. fabulous place. All or, religions are. The thing yeah. is, is that we have no frame of reference in the West about the level and degree of, this belie of these belief systems. Yeah. Yeah. We don't comprehend it. Is that because of the Western world has modernised, enlightened, and whereas the Eastern world maybe hasn't as much, so it's still people believe more? Like we did in this country 500 years ago, you'd believe it, or is it something to do with the... It absolutely is, and in yeah. fact it leads academics and experts, so-called experts on the subject, to say actually it's not religion and belief, it's actually grievances. Mm. Now whilst grievances are do have a role to play, it is religion has a salient role, a primary role. They really do believe. Mm. Do you think if imams on the main spoke in English in mosques, we probably wouldn't be in this situation? Actually, um, at my mosque, they used to have an English sermon and then an Arabic one. Mm. And the Arabic one would be fiery mm. and would be extremely horrific because a lot of Pakistani or other Muslims won't speak Arabic anyway but the English one was tame yeah right because it's in case someone right. yeah it's interesting isn't it what, a, what about your friends have you lost many friends I mean I'm sure you've made a lot of new ones but yeah. have you lost any all of them did you not manage to get one with you no, no. and what can about... you talk to them now I mean can you go back to some of the, the people you knew when you had these extremist thoughts and and try and talk to them or not in fact, many of them are in denial. They say that you were such a nice guy. This couldn't have been the case. They can't kind of wrap their heads around They think around you've been it. brainwashed the other way. Yeah. They haven't threatened you or you haven't been... I have been threatened. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the other thing I find with all religions, I don't know why I'm going to throw it in, is their obsession with sexuality. Oh, and, yes. And the, the, the gay people walking in, you know, gays in support of Palestine. If you were gay and came out in a, a country that was Muslim, you would end up in terrible trouble. You'd get lynched. That is palpably absurd. The fact mm. that people are holding up signs, gays for Palestine? Mm. Yeah. Right. How could you support a Bro group, an organisation that would literally throw you off a roof? They're idiots, aren't they? Useful idiots. Useful idiots, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very worrying, because a lot of the people, when asked uh, by some of the journalists who go out and talk to people, in 
the um, in the demonstrations and they asked some questions about it have no idea they absolutely don't they follow each other like blind sheep mm. um, it's all about the, the next big thing and fitting in and trying to be virtuous it's kind of virtue signaling mm. and they just support roles they they support ideals that they don't even understand they're just very weak-minded and they like you say just want a virtue so absolutely well. so well, well, i come back to the question and and you know this in my in my mind i'm encompassing all religions you know extremist uh, jews extremist christians mm. muslims at the moment are at the top of the list because of the oh, things yes. that are happening all over the world but surely we can save the planet from this in some way no. See, um, the matter is, is that our genes co-evolved with the memes in the Dokenite sense, mm. as in a unit of cultural evolution. That, that development of religion impacted on our genes and the, our genes impacted on the development of religion. And I do think that it is actually part of human nature to believe. And one of the reasons I think that we've lost the plot here in Britain is because people have lost religion and they've instead made another religion one of wokeness wokeness yeah and it's literally another religion yeah. it, they they behave in the exact same and way and climate change has become a sort of religion as well hasn't it they, they, they sort of there is some people do um over mm. become over the top like we're all yeah. going to die yeah well, we are. Well, in medieval but, times, you know, they go, if we don't pray to God, there'll be terrible weather. It's sort of a modern version of that, isn't it? It's like a, Thankfully, a scientific... um, we're way ahead with nuclear fusion than the yeah. public realises. We've actually got, an, we're building an experimental um, power plant, a fusion power plant in Nottingham. Nottingham. Is that the Rolls-Royce? Uh, the Rolls-Royce are the small modular reactors. Yeah. Uh, this is actually a government-funded um, thing. Because the electric cars and all of that is going oh, to obviously catch up. not going to catch What do you think up? the future is in this country with these Islamic extremes? Are they going to eventually get control? I think what's going to happen is that things will get so much worse that as a result the far right will grow. Mm -hmm. And then that, that will quickly spiral out of control. And as things do get worse, I think the people will slowly come to realize the extent and the severity of the threat. It's the Hegelian pendulum. It swings in one way, accepting literal extremists, but it's going to swing the other way eventually, yeah. and eventually settle in the middle somewhere. So it'll be It's going right, to take yeah. a few years. Yes. So you'll I, get Islamofascists and you'll get the right-wing fascists and eventually yeah. it'll settle in the middle. And, and in fact, I think that um, the way in which these people kind of propagate their views is literally destructive to the very social fabric of this country. If you were to say now to those people who are uh, of the Islamic faith, the people that you grew up with, that you sympathized with and understood, who are listening now, particularly some of the younger ones, probably easier mm. to get to younger ones than older ones, what would you say to them to start them on this road of, of um, the road thought. to Damascus. Yeah. No, that's probably I right. would, no. I would bring up the fact that originally when Islam was new, scholars were more open-minded. They would consider different opinions. Yeah. Um, there were something like so many different sects. Now there are only five schools of jurisprudence. Mm. Islam has become crystallized and has become narrow. Cultural, hasn't it? Exactly. Cultural. Rather than religious, they, like the burqa isn't part of Islam, yeah. is it? And the hijab and all that, yeah. Yeah. Do you, are you religious now? You're not. We already asked. I don't believe. You, you don't really. Believe, I, I don't believe. No. I, I, if I were to believe, but in you're God, culturally it would be a Muslim. The, yes. Indeed. Yeah. Do you think you could ever change back? You know, just suddenly have another and, and go back to where you were. Thinking? Honestly, yeah. lit literally, the the laws of physics would have to be suspended or would yeah. have to be broken in news. order to me. Yeah. To Excellent. turn back. Mm. Excellent. Man. Would you say to? I mean, I don't understand. We have been very open in this country we're very free we've accepted everybody um nobody has had to learn to speak the language which i think is a big barrier mm. for for past generations 
Um, and then when I'm in hospital, I notice how many different languages, particularly from the Middle East, they have everything in. So, you know, if you ring up, which language would you like? That's the law in this country. Well, they, they really... For instance, I'll give the example of my mother. She said she purposefully didn't learn English mm. because she said that was the language of the kuffar, the mm. infidels. Mm. And they, they, they don't make an effort to, to integrate. You see, the West Not thinks if we give stuff to them, they'll be appreciative. But th th from that part of the world, they look at that as weakness to take yes, advantage yes, of. Yes, absolutely. That's the whole thing and in fact, get. the Enlightenment philosophers mm. actually debated the idea that what if uh, an illiberal ideology comes along that seeks to destroy liberalism itself? Yeah. And they said, well, we cannot be tolerant of intolerance. Mm. That was, this was being discussed way before... But Voltaire, the Enlightenment, said everyone should get free speech. So he'll, I, think, I think he was wrong with that. So, Hill, before we go, we've got about 30 seconds. Where could people find out? Lots of people want to know more about you. Um, and no. Is there somewhere they can go and read your thoughts? They can follow me on Twitter... Um, add me on Facebook. What's your Twitter handle? Follow me um, at um, S O H S N Ahmed A H M E D. Right. Um, so he'll thank you very much indeed for coming in. I wish you so much luck.